Bayonet Charge by Ted Hughes is a poem about a World War I soldier. Hughes himself was born in 1930, long after the end of World War I, so the poem's not based on his own personal experience, it's an imagined account. We begin the poem mid-action, with a soldier charging towards the enemy, rifle in hand. The soldier's running, stumbling across a field towards a hedge. He can hear the sounds of gunfire, and the horror of the moment pushes aside his original patriotism and replaces it with sheer panic. In the second stanza, the soldier begins to contemplate what he's doing and why he's doing it. He feels there's no point in war. In the third and final stanza, the focus shifts to a hare that has found itself caught up in the midst of the battle. The poet's use of language in the final stanza contains a mocking tone as Hughes criticises the patriotism of soldiers, pointing out that the noble virtues of honour and human dignity, etc. mean little or nothing when you're facing the true horror of war. Let me just point out, this video is a quick recap of the poem. To learn more, watch my full analysis, which I'll link at the end. In terms of power and conflict, Bayonet Charge is a poem which focuses on the reality of war and how its true horror is ultimately indescribable. As I mentioned, the poem begins mid-action with the word suddenly. We see the same thing in the poem Remains. Clearly something has gone before this moment, but we as the reader are not made aware of it. The result is that we are confused and unsure of what is happening, just like the frightened soldier. Hughes employs enjambment to portray the chaos of war. Enjambment is the continuation of a sentence beyond the end of a line. We see this throughout the poem, even between stanzas, for example here, where we read, Then the shot slashed furrows threw up a yellow hair. The enjambment creates a disjointed, disordered effect on the reader. Just like the soldier, the reader struggles to make sense of the chaos. Similarly, Hughes employs caesura, presenting the end of sentences mid-line, stopped with full stops or question marks. This caesura, particularly when considered alongside the enjambment, once again causes the reader difficulty. It's interesting to note that this device is only used twice in the poem, both times in the second stanza, where the soldier stops to consider what he is doing and why. The caesura forces the reader, like the soldier, to stop and think. And note the repetition in lines 1 and 2 of the word raw. The idea of running raw in raw-seamed hot khaki reminds us of extract from the prelude with a huge peak black and huge. If a student wrote this line in a piece of creative writing, their teacher might well suggest they replace one use of raw with a different word. The repetition means it's clunky and doesn't read or flow well. The repetition reflects the shock the soldiers experienced upon waking. It's as if he's stuttering, struggling to articulate the moment, and the poet's repetition reflects that. This interpretation would fit in with the theme of the poem. War is so horrific, the poet is unable to clearly express the moment, forced instead to stutter and repeat himself. Hughes employs a vast number of similes in the poem, seen here underlined on screen. Yes, that's six similes we find within Bayonet Charge. Each simile can be analysed individually, but let's first stop and think about the combined effect of a simile-ridden poem. What is a simile? It's a comparison of one thing to another, and Hughes' use of so many similes is as if he's saying, I don't know how to actually describe this moment. The best I can do is to compare it to something which I can describe. So we can add the overwhelming use of similes to the list of devices employed by Hughes to express the sheer horror of war, a horror so terrible it cannot be fully described. In the final stanza, the soldier thinks of king, honour, human dignity, etc. The final word, etc., is used to mean, and so on. The tone is mocking, criticising the patriotic values that soldiers supposedly have. Hughes is pointing out that these noble virtues mean little or nothing when facing the heat of battle. The etc. is essentially saying king, honour, human dignity, blah de blah de blah We can read this as a harsh critique of war. We can also see it as a challenge, a suggestion that the noble virtues of patriotism are a million miles away from the reality of war. The fact that the soldier is referred to as he backs up the notion this poem is a critique of war. The soldier's not named because the poem is not about one soldier. It's about all soldiers. It's about all war. And now to the final line of the poem. Having questioned what he is doing and why, the soldier runs on, his terror's touchy dynamite. Despite his objections, the soldier has become a killing machine, and this alliterative metaphor perfectly sums up the danger he can potentially inflict upon others. So in terms of power and conflict, this is a poem about the reality of war, and it compares well with Exposure, The Charge of the Light Brigade, Remains, War Photographer, and Kamikaze. 
but which other poems would you compare it with and why? Put your comments in the comments section. For more on this poem, pick up a copy of Mr. Bruff's Guide to Power and Conflict Poetry, available exclusively in ebook form and linked in the description. If you like this shorter style of analysis video, do give it a thumbs up and I'll make some more, but remember, this video isn't intended to tell you everything you need to know about the poem, it's a recap for revision purposes. For the full lesson, check out the video linked here on screen.